I'm, they're all going in different directions. And I use tricks like fast forward, because when you go in fast forward, if they're all stars, they all go in the same direction. You know, these things are all sure. moving. But what was very interesting is they're saying, how far is the tether? Well, the tether is now 100 miles. And, and they zoom with their incredible zoom in on it. And you see some of these, these uh, spheres in front of the tether, and some of absolutely clearly, no problem at all, they're behind the tether. And if the tether's 12 miles, and these are half the size of the tether going behind it at 100 miles away, they're not specks of ice. Well, even for me, I'm, I find it hard to believe that they could be crystals then if, yeah, if they're Yeah, but, but again, that. I'm merely saying that, you know, I'd, I'd like, that, that I'm just saying what they can't be. And, and the, I've never heard of a, of a, a six-mile ice crystal that's spotted crystal clear a hundred miles away, you know, et cetera. So um, there's, there's hundreds of those examples. Um, they, then they've called them on the different videos. One time they said they were shooting stars and meteors. Then the same phenomenon appears on the next flight, and it's ice crystals. And then the next phenomenon appears on the next flight, and it's debris. You see, you see what I mean? They've already established it on STS 70 something that it's. That it's I, I that seem it's to remember shooting, something about fireflies at one stage from stars. a long, long time ago. I believe this uh, spherical phenomena first appeared to John Glenn uh, it, as early as 1962. And um, he did, f and, and it continued. We have documentation uh, from various publications that shows that they. Uh, no, clearly, they they didn't have an answer for three to four space flights. They had an answer to what you know the blue haze around the Earth is. You know, it's uh, they had an answer to just about everything else. But there's this very interesting thing about three or four flights in, where it says John Glenn's fireflies spotted over Perth. They're still calling them John Glenn's fireflies, and we have an astronaut making the comment on the 25th anniversary of the moon flight. He says, it's hard to believe, but he says it's a fact that we thought that John's fireflies, again, Glenn's fireflies, were living critters. Now, at no time have I, I've read everything, and at no time have I ever heard that before, that NASA concluded originally that the fireflies were alive. So, so they were still calling them John Glenn's fireflies four flights in. There's another interesting thing. If you look at John Glenn's original photos, which I have, which he bought, he bought a camera at a Cocoa Beach drugstore, even though the shuttle, or the, the whatever capsule that <laughs> I've forgotten, even though they had a camera on that, he took his own. And when he saw the fireflies, and it's all documented, and you, it's even in the movie, The Right Stuff, he holds the camera up while the fireflies are above his head, and he says, I better film or you guys are gonna think I'm nuts. And when you see those pictures, and you see the pictures of the shuttle today and the mirror, it's, you see the same phenomena. Sounds Little like it might be an, spherical. an interesting exercise to show John Glenn the footage that you've now got and let him comment uh, on that. I challenge NASA JPL, Story Musgrave, astronauts, and especially James Holberg, to debate me. Because it's one of those situations where if they haven't done the homework I've done, and they don't have the video I have, and they haven't done the research, and that they don't have a chance. I wouldn't be able to downlink what I got. I wouldn't be able to find the things I've found and do it consistently like I have been able to do if, 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 if NASA really wanted to hide it. Although you did mention to me, Mark, and that they shifted a, a satellite at one stage. Or yes, they've done some shifty things and there, there are um, military people as well as the, the non-military people. For instance, there's a flight I have where there's, it's basically the entire flight was the control room except for the spacewalk. The spacewalk was to test the new backpacks and it's a famous uh, walk because the fellow flipped around, the astronaut flipped around and couldn't stop. So that's what made the news. But if you look at the whole spacewalk and everybody in the media had the chance, there's a, a point where he says, there's not, Mark, will you look out there? There's an object right in front of you. Um, 
uh, and the and the military fellow says, I don't know what you're talking about. Now just think to yourself, if if I said there's a bee about to sting you, wouldn't you go, I wonder where that is, or something other than, I don't know what you're talking about. First of all, what do you mean you don't know what I'm talking about? If I'm in outer space and I'm flying around and my partner says there's an object in front of you, I wouldn't say, I don't know what you're talking about. And then his next line is, never mind. And then the third astronaut says, am I missing something? And he says, don't worry, the, the lens filter came off, now confirming the size and how close it must have been. Going, and it's flying off at a 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock. Now, when they first mentioned the object, the, the shuttle camera, you couldn't see it. So I wasn't looking for it. They drew my attention to it. I looked, and there the object emerged. And the third thing he's saying to the third astronaut is, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. You know, it's the camera filter. And then he even confirms, off 10, 11 o'clock, 10, 11 o'clock, you know. And then there's a pause, and the control, uh, control room below tells him to stay vector. Shut up, stay on course. Continue with what you were supposed to do. And then they continued as if nothing happened, as if, if nothing had happened. Yet, I've, it's right on tape, audio, video, and you see the object they're referring to. So, but my point was, they didn't hide that from me. They, they're challenging us to find it. And I, my only question is, how come there aren't more of us out there finding it? I, I, this is a big world, and most humans love mysteries, and the video is available, if, and many people have home dishes. And even though NASA moved the satellite almost onto the horizon after they found out what we were doing, um, we still were able to get the satellite. I just don't see, I don't see, um, I've had no agents at my house. I've communicated with the C Canadian Space Agency, but I can't, for, the, for their protection at this point, I, I can't give you the name, but let me just say that we ran it by our own country, Space Agency, due to the connections we, we had. And what, what was their comment? That it was the most popular underground tape among the astronauts. You know, that it was the one they, they all wanted to have a copy and show their friends at night. Like, that, that was the reaction. This is a great tape. We love looking at it. Everyone just thinks it's the greatest. No, the Canadian Space Agency has been very cooperative. That's what I, I'd like to say. The Canadian Space Agency has been cooperative. I communicated with Washington headquarters and received an answer. And we've been receiving answers from JPL in California. Everyone's talking to us. No one's threatening us. And all the video has been totally available the whole time. So, that, so I don't hold that NASA is, is going out of their way. I think they make it difficult like any, anybody. When I used to hide Easter eggs for my niece and nephew, you, you don't make it too easy. My dog doesn't make it easy to find the bones he buried. But, and, but it, and it's not easy to do. This is, this is very hard. I want to emphasize that even for me, this has been a very hard but fun thing to do. And I think um, the preponderance, I think you have to do what I did. You have to record every moment of every flight over a period of years if you're, if you're looking to substantiate something of this magnitude and importance. I took what Professor Weinberg of Simon Fraser University said very seriously. If you really want to do this, duplicate it. Get it in every lighting condition. Get it under every circumstance. Get it in every circumstance you can. And the one that made me happiest, funny enough, was almost the last flights I recorded because I got it in black and white. There was a CCD camera put on one of the flights. And I thought, th that's the ch uh, um, charge coupling device, which is an electronic way, rather than the old tubes, these big tubes that are slower on their scans. So as soon as the faster scanning and um, tube uh, CCD was on the black and white, I challenged myself again, you should be able to find them, and I did.
So I've got them in black and white. But I've got them under, and I know what, which camera. I now know where to look for them. I know what events. When the, 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 in STS-80, when the door wouldn't open, you know, they, they had the spacewalk scheduled, and the door wouldn't open. I remember watching that and seeing all of these, this third phenomena, this second space phenomena, but the third phenomena, all around the door. And they were moving the door and trying to get it open. And I'd never seen this phenomena do that before. And then the, a flight or two later, the astronauts were commenting right on the feed that there was something that come through the door. <laughs> they were seeing these flashing colored lights. Another one. 